What kind of car makes a personal statement like no other? Where does machine meet art? In the unique balance of artistic expression and mechanical power, an American classic, the hot rod. Hi, Doug White from Model Car Muse. In this video, we have the pleasure of seeing two of the finest examples of scale hot rod models, thanks to graphic designer and lifetime model builder, Tim Kalankowitz. We caught up with Tim at the 40th NNL Nationals in Toledo, where we saw his famous Coral Aura, which we will admire in a future video. He also brought his hot rods and described for us the pursuit of scale authenticity and artistry. So I'm here with Tim. Yeah. He's brought two really awesome street rods. What was your inspiration for the two? Um, I built the Bugatti first, and I just decided I was going to build something different. And I had this Bugatti monogram kit sitting on the shelf, and I said, this kind of has a hot rod look to it. So I pulled out a small block Chevy, because that's the standard hot rod thing, and said, okay, what's it gonna take to get this in? So I kind of sectioned the body and made a frame for it and said, oh, it'd be really neat with a uh, supercharger out front, but now you can't really put the grill. And it has a low slung radiator cooling system underneath the engine. A front mounted supercharger, you can't have a typical water pump. I had to come up with an electric type water pump to cool the car if it was real. And so it just kind of went from there and I said, all right, it's still kind of 60s, so I wanted it to be kind of 60s nostalgic. So you've solved all the technical issues in the model, getting the cooling done efficiently, exactly. but just as they would have done in the day, all very exactly. realistic. And, but still, it has a little bit of modern technology because, you know, the electric style water. The, the, yeah. I started looking at water pumps, like how NASCAR has their, their fuel pump mm -hmm. systems and all like that, and I said, but I wanted it to be as nostalgic as it can possibly be. Yeah, which we, when you do a crank driven supercharger, that's like it just hits an era just right. Exactly. And yeah. it's such a cool look, everything stays low, which is great with the classic Bucati boat tail like that. Mm -hmm. Now, that kit was that like blue plastic? It was blue plastic, yeah. yes. It was, you know the one. I remember that kit. Didn't paint it blue. I, which a lot of people might have done. I didn't want it blue, I no. wanted a candy apple red. Yeah, right. <laughs> it that, just, it's a hot rod. Exactly. <laughs> right. And it was sort of like if, say, someone just found one in a barn and, so, and built it in the 60s, because in the 60s, yeah. the Bugatti, yeah, it was like an old race car. Right. And maybe it was kind of beat up, and they said, oh, well, we're just going to do something cool. So. Hot rodding started in the 30s, but it was after World War II when things really developed. Builders pursued the latest trends like white white walls, metallic paint, indie tires, chrome, aluminum, and magnesium wheels instead of steel. When this issue of Rod and Custom hit the stands in 73, it became clear that things had progressed far enough in 30 years that hot rodding had a history. Pete and Jake were one of the first to embrace hot rodding's origins, and so instead of pursuing the latest trends, looked back and use those early influences to craft their creations. Tim's hot rods pick up this historical vibe. Yeah. Your suspension has just a lot of fine detail on it. The wheels, are they kit wheels? Yes, everything on it is all clad, except for the chrome plating on the headlights and the headers. And then they're all custom offsets because I wanted my wheels to be a certain way. So I'm always yep. cutting, uh, I'll t you know, even like on the gold cart, it took like six sets of wheels cut, to cut up to get the wheels that I needed for that. Just that with one, the right offset. Exactly, because the, right, yeah. Cause the wheel, wheels make a model. It, it's the difference between making it look like a toy versus making it look like a, a real car. Sure. It's, they've got to sit right, it's, the stance is everything, and so I played a lot with making sure it sat low. The Bugatti, it would be a very tight car, I'd say only about a five foot five person could drive it, but I actually measured it all out that someone slim, a jockey style, could drive this car. Because <laughs> it was pretty tight to get the whole drivetrain and the, the 
drive shaft all in it. It has a full belly fan, so I kind of got to fudge a little bit. I thought about hinging the trunk, but I was like, what am I going to show there other than a little gas tank and a battery? And a... But it doesn't have an alternator, so the lights would be kind of funny. You're only going to use the lights as long as the battery lasts, but you're not driving. It's not a very practical car. So. No, <laughs> it's gorgeous. It's everything a hot rod needs to be. Thank you. And the gold one? The gold one, after I built the, the red one, I was like, I'm still on this hot rod kick. And I just pulled out a 32 Ford, and there was actually the car, I was when I'm working at the magazine Hot Rod, uh, the car Sylvester just came out. It was um, a 60 show car, and it just blew me away. I mean, the amount of detail in it, and they restored it, actually rustified it a bit. I said, oh, I gotta build that next. And so that was the inspiration for it with the low slung 32 body on the ground. And I said, I didn't want to copy it or replicate it. So I kind of took my own deal on it and the um all the chassis came from the five window Rizal kit and it had the hemi in it and i said okay that's good so i'll start and i started i wanted supercharged so i wanted another kind of exotic supercharger and i went with the latham and just researching interesting in induction systems for it and i came across that intake system that was actually a one-to-one -one thing that somebody had built those manifolds and adapted it to the side of the life and had those six carburetors up in the air and I said, oh, yeah. that's that's what I want is like big carbs sticking up, up in the air. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and it just kinda went from there. Detail wise, one thing that really makes this replicate so well, the headlights. Exactly. The hole inside the headlights, the reflector. There's depth in there. When you look past that clear glass, mm. I don't know if you thin that down or if you massage those, it at all. Those are the, those are the kit gorgeous. glasses. But I, the funny thing was, is I, I knew I was going to use those headlights, yeah. and they stayed on the tree yeah. until I actually, when I'm building, I'll have like two or three different sets of parts, and these are the, the real parts oh, stay in the box, gotcha. and then I have right. parts that I'm using to, Never to build. Never touched by human hands. Exactly yeah. until they go on the car, and so. And it was kind of funny, those headlights, that's actually the second set, because the first set, when I, they were in the box so long as yeah. I built it, and I go to cut them, it had one little mar on the back of it. And so I started call, going to my buds, and I said, yeah. hey man, I, I, I don't want to sound like a prima donna or something, but this has like a little spot on it, and I can't yeah. put this on my car. Please, yeah. someone, right. I'm reaching out, I I'm need a perfect one. one. <laughs> I, and they got to be perfect. Don't don't mess with me unless they're perfect. And by the way, don't twist it off the tree. Exactly. You you always cut the. I want the whole frame around it. So. Yeah. Cool. But I really like Great the business. dash. The dash in it is my favorite part. Um, I do photo etch for Model Car Garage. Oh yeah. And um, I thought that the work that I did on the 40 Ford kit was some of the best. And I always wanted to put that dash in one of my models. And I'm not a big on a 40 Ford anyway. And I was like, oh, I'm gonna put a cut down 40 Ford dash and use the photo etch grill. All the trim on it is photo etch. The clock is... Uh, that's, in, that's the classic. Exactly, backboard. exactly. Yeah. And it came out so cool. You, you can zoom in with a loop and read the clock in it. You can read the odometer on it. And it was really neat to put those parts in. Did you put your birthday in the odometer? <laughs> I think I put the date of the when date I draw. Nice. There you go. I like it. I like, I like the it. custom it's, tag. It's your own yeah. Easter egg that's in there. Exactly. Yeah. So. And it's in everybody else's that gets a model car garage. <laughs> so a little known fact. Okay. I want to thank Tim Kalankowitz for sharing these builds with us. His attention to mechanical and technical accuracy and his meticulous execution while having fun with the design brings us models that perfectly express that individualism and pride of craftsmanship that is the American Hot Rod. As always, like so we can share these stories with more people and subscribe so you won't miss any of our upcoming videos. Follow your muse wherever you may find it. And may there always be a project on your bench. Thanks for watching.